It is an absolute honor to be with everybody today. I want to thank you in particular for always standing up at the DNC and the ASDC meetings. You are constantly a voice for the red states, the states that are often forgotten by the national pundits, but that we know and I'll talk about today uh, are worth fighting for. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to be with the heart of the party. What a great name for the Women's Federation in the beautiful city of Tulsa. Thank you to the organizers of today's event, Heart of Party President Jane McLaughlin, Vice President Shauna Keller, Fundraising Chair Cara Gay Neal. We also have the outstanding president of the Oklahoma Federation of Democratic Women, Betty Rector. The chair of the Tulsa Dems, Bruce Nimi, and not one but two candidates for mayor, Monroe and Karen, so thank you all for being here. As volunteers in our party, there are often late nights, early mornings, and endless meetings. They are all there for a purpose. Each email sent, each door knocked, each conversation held builds our collective power. You are each engaging women at the grassroots level, proving that when voices that are often silent speak up, those voices echo far and wide. So if you had a part in today's event, or you're a party leader, a candidate, or an elected official, please stand up so we can thank you again. Those of us that live in red states, whether it's Oklahoma or Nebraska where I live, know that we are often written off as flyover country by the pundit class and by the donor class. The folks on TV think that not only are we a bunch of rednecks, but we're not worth the time or investment, but we all know that people in our states are worth fighting for. When you are building power in a red state, you learn what it's like to get attacked and bombarded with insults on a daily basis. Yet, despite these insults, attacks, and misinformation, leaders like Chair Andrews keep fighting for a better state. And too often in politics, quite frankly, we don't talk about who bears the burden of these attacks. It's those of us who are vi visible and who are willing to take a firm stand of our party's values that are always centered around helping people. So it's the party officials all the way from the county level to Washington, D.C., willing to take those insults from the Trump Republicans because we all know what's on the line. Party leaders, like many of you in the room, do this so we can shield the foundation of our party, which is our candidates and our elected officials, because that is what our party work is all about. It's about getting good, strong Democrats who share our values elected to office. We build the party at the state and local level where it matters because that's where people are closest to the ground and know the issues that are most important to the people. This is where we talk about our values and all the issues that we as Democrats stand for. So when I was traveling here, a couple things really struck me. First, the day before I left, I read the story of a non-binary student here in Oklahoma who was bullied, harassed, and beaten by high school students. And now Nex is no longer on this earth and is joining the Star Nation. Nex was 16 years old. The villainization of their identity by extremist Republicans led to their death. We cannot allow MAGA Republicans to celebrate hate and fear. We must fight back through every insult, through every personal attack thrown our way, so that no person, let alone a child, ever loses their life again. It is fundamental that we as Democrats who care about people continue stand up for the LGBTQ community because they, on a daily basis, are living in the face of hate. 
we must stand up to the bullies who try to strip women of our reproductive freedoms or the right to bear a child via in vitro fertilization. Second, on my drive, I was reminded of the beauty of our states. I love driving, and quite honestly, because I live in a rural town, if I didn't love driving, I would live a very frustrated life <laughs> because when you live in a rural town, which some of you maybe grew up or live in, uh, you know that you drive a lot. Uh, sometimes it's 25 minutes to the nearest grocery store or a good hour and a half to a good clothing store, sometimes two and a half hours, but it's what we do to live in our beautiful, small, vibrant towns. And so on the drive here, I got to listen to music, so shout out to all the Swifties out there, uh, and some great podcasts like Pod Save America, which if you don't know that, you should definitely look it up. But I got to enjoy the beautiful landscapes of rural Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma. The prairie, the cattle nursing their calves, as spring comes that we continue to see more and more birds decorating the sky with the beautiful dances that they do. And so on one stretch of the drive, I saw this huge flock of geese. It literally looked like the sky had almost turned black because there were so many birds. And when the birds are flying, you know that they fly in a V and they move as a complete unit. So there's these separate units of about 20 or 30 geese all in a V and then all the other geese around them. You know, so there's that one in the center, that's the leader, right? When they get tired, they fall back and another one steps in. And so when you gaze up at the sky and you see the flocks of birds all headed in the same direction, independent groups for sure, but all moving as one unit, that's how our party needs to operate. Similar to birds, our party has two wings. Instead of a left and a right, we have a progressive and a moderate wing. And in the face of insults and challenging times, in the face of radical Trump Republicans, we cannot forget that we are flying in the same direction and that we need both wings. Only with both wings can we actually make our power count during elections. And only through working together as a flock can we secure a future that puts education over book banning, love over hate, and empathy over assumptions. We must stand together to combat climate change, to ensure that the rights of farmers and ranchers and tribal nations are protected, to let women handle our own reproductive decisions, to protect the human rights of the LGBT community, to stand with unions who literally build the middle class in America, and like Barbara, who I was with yesterday, make sure that we stand and speak for the river, which for too long in Oklahoma has been polluted by industry that turns its back on doing what is right. This brings me to our right and our responsibility of voting. If you've been in politics for more than one cycle, you've heard the pundits, you've even heard people today on the stage say that this is the election of our lifetimes. It's become almost a running joke in political circles because we all joke with each other. How is it possible that every single election is the most important in our lifetime? So this year, in just eight months, I didn't say the days because when you say the days, it terrifies you. We will all be going to the ballot box to decide not only who the president will be, but who will make laws in our state legislature, who will make decisions in education at the school board level, and who will zone in or zone out clean energy at the county level. And I hope, obviously, that we choose Democrats who choose love over hate and who choose people over the powerful. Because in our fight for a better country, we have to vote for city and county level candidates who write fair zoning laws for, zone, for clean energy and candidates at the school board level who make sure that we're working to ban hunger in schools rather than banning books. These offices are literally on the front lines of democracy. So in 2024, we as women and the men who love us 
must stand up like our bodies and lives depend on it because there is no question they do. We must vote and organize to ensure that every elected official who wants to control the bodies of women is simply voted out of office. The Alabama Supreme Court just banned in vitro fertilization. They have ruled that frozen embryo, embryos have just as many rights as every single person in this room. And worse, they are forcing women to implant embryos that their own doctors know are not viable, putting the lives of women in jeopardy, all so they can maintain control of our bodies. This is why organizations like Heart of the Party are so crucial. We as women have been the focus of backroom planning of Republicans for decades. They have always wanted to decide what our bodies and what our reproductive decisions can or cannot be. So while it may have become a punchline or a joke to some, we need to lean in and embrace the fundamental fact that every single election is the election of our lifetime because every single election we are choosing leaders that will decide if next lives or dies, if women get to make reproductive decisions, if the river is polluted, and if we are banning hunger instead of banning books. So no matter the insults that are lobbed at us, the dirty looks we get from neighbors when we're putting up our yard signs, because I'm sure you're in that boat, <laughs> or the hate that the other side fights with and leads with, we have to keep building power together. Whether it's in cities like Tulsa or in my state in Omaha, where the race for mayor has real life impacts on the lives of people, or in rural towns like Pawnee or Scotts Bluff, we have to build the grassroots power because that's the only way that we will remember that the party that stands up for the people is the party that then gets in charge. Isn't it a beautiful thought that one day, and sometimes that day when you're in the trenches doesn't seem possible, but that one day we can look back on future generations and they will say, it was our courage, everybody in this room, our dedication, our get up and go that one more time to go knock that one more door that built a better world for us. Because it is every step that we take towards a legacy that has to outlive where we are today. So let's move forward together with resolve to create a stronger Tulsa, a stronger Oklahoma, and a stronger and more just America for our kids. Because this is our path and this is our party to shape. So my closing rallying call to all the women in the room and the men who love us, you have to run for office. I read a report from American University many years ago, and it has stuck with me every single year. It essentially said that men have to be asked to run for office once and they run. Sometimes they don't even have to be asked, they just put their name on the ballot. Women. They have to be asked 10 times before they agree to run for office. So to every single woman in this room, your voice is needed, your ideas are worth sharing, and you are ready to run. So join me, everybody, in telling the women in the room it's their time to run for office. And remember, we gotta say it 10 times, so everybody's gotta say it with me. Run for office, 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 run for office. You got it. <laughs>